Staying with Israel, which has been trying to deport the Israel and Palestine director of Human Rights Watch over the past year. Omar Shakir's work permit was revoked in May 2018 after 10 months of work on the ground. This after he was accused of calling for the boycott of Israel, which he says is not accurate. Today, the case is being dealt with at Supreme Court level. Omar Shakir joins us from Ramallah. Omar, thank you so much for being with us here on Middle East Matters. Tell us about the work that you have been doing in Israel and Palestine and why the government feels threatened by this. Human Rights Watch has been documenting serious rights abuses by the Israeli government as well as by Palestinian authorities for nearly three decades. What we face on the ground is a more than 50-year occupation defined by systematic rights abuse and institutional discrimination. We've done quite a bit of work to expose those rights abuses by all parties. And in a context in which the Israeli government is increasingly shrinking the space for human rights defenders and not even showing the pretense of respect for international norms, this deportation case fits a larger pattern of muzzling critics of its policies. And of course, there is no precedence of this happening before Israel deporting someone who is already, like yourself, legally present in the country. That's, that's correct. The Israeli government um, initially took many months and then denied a permit for Human Rights Watch to even have a foreign employee within Israel at the time accusing Human Rights Watch of being propagandist and not legitimate rights activists. But then they gave me the work permit. And then within months of being here, they initiated proceedings call calling for me to be deported after giving me legal status based on a new law that permits them, in fact, instructs the government to deny entry to those they allege call for boycotts of Israel. Of course, Human Rights Watch takes no position on boycotts. What we do do is document the serious rights abuses of all parties, including companies in settlements, and call for companies to respect rights everywhere they operate. Omar, you just mentioned you spoke of efforts to muzzle those who are essentially critical of Israel's policies. Can you give us some other examples outside your own case? The Israeli government has denied entry to many other foreign international rights activists, including representatives of Amnesty International and senior UN officials. They have accused Israeli advocacy groups like Breaking the Silence and B'Tselem of slander against the army or the state. And with Palestinian rights defenders, they have faced travel bans and even criminal charges and arrest without um, charge or trial as a result of their human rights advocacy. Briefly, Omar, if you can, some observers say that the more hardline elements in the Israeli government have been empowered since Donald Trump came into power. Do you agree with that assessment? And has that had an impact on the human rights situation in the country? Absolutely. Look, the U.S. government has always uh, at best turned a blind eye um, to Israeli rights abuses, um, including settlements, which are war crimes under international law. But what we've seen under the Trump administration is a move to green lighting abuses. I mean, you have senior U.S. officials that can find nothing to criticize uh, Israel on, as, as they've said in the last uh, weeks at a time in which Israel is caging 2 million Palestinians in the open-air prison of Gaza Strip, at a time in which it continues to build settlements which are illegal under international law. The reality is the current global context, in particular the current U.S. administration, has given a green light and even, in some cases, been complicit um, in Israel's ongoing serious violations of Palestinian rights. Omar Shakir of uh, Human Rights Watch, I'm afraid. That's all we have time for. Thank you so much for speaking to us here on Middle East Matters.